episode, I talked about recording, and I used the cloud for that. Uh, and the cloud is easy for sharing. Um, but I've had some questions about being able to just create a, a media file that you can generate and upload and share however you want to without going through the cloud, just doing it all local. Um, and today I'm going to talk about that. Some, some benefits to recording local um, is it's immediate, right? So as soon as you're done with the meeting, you have the file. The downside is you have to do some conversion in order to make it work. So this is not what I would generally consider probably the easiest always, but it's another option and I want you to see it so that you can try it out if you want to. If it doesn't work for you, go back to doing it on the cloud. So let's take a look at what it's like to record local, how to convert it, and how to share that with others. So I've started a WebEx meeting here and the important part is we, we want to record. I'm not going to worry about other people coming in here. We can record without that. So. Um, down here at the bottom, we've got the recorder button. I'm going to click on recorder. By default, mine is set to record in cloud. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to do the little drop down next to that and say record on my computer and hit record. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save my files at. So I'm just going to pick the desktop. And I'm just going to call it demo. And I'm going to hit save. And now I'm going to get a pop up that allows me to, to start recording. And it, I can set some audio options here if I want to really it's it's kind of default so this is not recording until I hit the record button so I'm going to go ahead and start my recorder panel and you'll see up here in the corner it says meeting recording in process so we've got that going I could do a couple things I could share my screen if I'm working with some other people I can have them join by video I can do some of those kind of things again I'm not looking for anything fancy here I just want to be able to show you what that recording is going to look like so I am going to stop recording now. And I can pause. Pause is another option, but stop's going to finalize it and it's going to save that file down for me. So you're going to see up here, recording in progress is gone now. It's not recording anymore. I can continue on with my meeting. I don't have to record the entire thing. Again, I could use pause. So I could record part of it, pause, do some other things in the background, come back and then continue recording. So that is an option. And then it's going to save that as one single file. So then I, now that I'm done, I'm going to end this meeting. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And out here on the desktop, I have a demo file. That's the, the file that I recorded. And you'll notice it's demo.wrf. So that is the file. We've got it downloaded, and we can work with it. We are not, however, at a point where we can share this with others because the only way to view a WRF file is to have the WebEx meeting player. There's a special utility for that. And on a Chromebook, that's not an option. So if we even want to try to share this with students, we need to convert this into a format that's usable by them. So in the notes of this video, I've put a link uh, that's going to take you to the page that you need to download the converter for. And it's WRF to WMV converter is the name of it, just to, to be fancy here. You're going to go to this page. A little ways down, you need to look for the download section, and there's the zip file. So you're going to download this. You're going to install the application that's in the zip file, and you are going to get on your desktop an icon that looks like this, WebEx Converter. And that is going to do the conversion for you that's going to make this WRF file playable on other devices. So we're going to open up the WebEx Converter, and it's very straightforward here. We're going, we want to add a file. It's the only option that you have. We're going to click Add, and we want the source file and the output. So the source is the file we want to convert from. That's the WRF file. So I'm going to browse and I am going to find my WRF that's on my desktop. So wherever I saved it at, in this case it's right here. So I am going to click on that and I'm going to open that file. And you'll see that it populates my source file and then it goes ahead and populates an output file that's saved in the same folder but the extension is .wmv. And that is a file that's playable both in a, on a Windows machine and on a Chromebook makes it much more useful for what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to click OK because I'm, I'm fine with the, the new file name that is decided for me. And once it does that, it, this information, really we don't have to worry about all this. All we're worried about is down here at the bottom where it says Start Converting. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to convert that file. You're going to see a couple things pop up over here while it's doing it. No big deal. Takes just a little bit of time. This will take longer depending on the size of the video file. So if you record an hour-long session, it's going to have to convert that entire hour-long session. It's going to take a little bit of time, um, but it's, it will already be here for you and ready to go.
Once it's done, uh, the close button will pop up. That means it's actually finished converting and you can, you can close and be done. So I'm going to click the close button. I have my WMB file right here. I could double click on that. It'll open it in a player and we'll see it. That's the recording that we made just earlier with our recording player. So that's great. That's exactly what I want to be able to share. So I'm going to close this out. And now that this is in WMB format, I could send this as an attachment in an email. I could drop it into a Google Drive and share it to a Google Classroom. Uh, however that I want to get that shared out for others to be able to view it, I can do that because it's in a file that format that's available for others. That's all there is to converting. I say that's all there is. It's not exactly the, the most straightforward and simple process, but I think if you follow the instructions and you can go back and watch this again a couple times, slow it down or pause, and you can see that this is how you can convert those files and make them usable to share with others. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you have any other ideas or, or things that you'd like to see me talk about, please let me know, leave a comment for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see any new video as I have them come out, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch.